Well, hello, this is Paul Adams from the First Southern Baptist Church in Reading. We start a new year in 2021, and I'm so thrilled to be able to share this time with you. And I'm going to begin reading today from God's Word, Luke chapter 1. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Here in the first Christmas story, we read that the Lord appeared to Mary and he gave her the wonderful news that she had found favor with God. And though she was just a teenage girl in her life, perhaps uh, in a world that the Roman Empire dominated, and we read of her circumstances. She was not a person of wealth, at least worldly, uh, a worldly perspective. She didn't have many possessions. She didn't have much money. Her and her husband-to-be, Joseph, uh, they were, uh, according to God's word, they had very little. And, but yet they were very rich towards God because the Bible tells us that they trusted in the Lord. Joseph and Mary had a home that they were building together and with God. And whenever you're building life with God, your life becomes rich from a heavenly perspective and also from an earthly perspective because the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So God is the one who leads in my life. He's the good shepherd of my life. He's the one who's providing what he knows that I need, not necessarily what I want. And so as I learn to please God and trust him with my life, he begins to fill my life with the riches that he knows that I can handle and I can use in life. It doesn't mean sometimes that we look at life and say it's not fair. You know, I, I want to live for the Lord. I wish I had all these worldly riches. Well, if that's truly in your heart, then maybe we're not so close to God as one might think. But here we read that Mary was a woman, a young teenage girl who gives an example for all ages to follow is that her riches came from pleasing God, from trusting in the Lord and obeying him. She would go on to say, Lord, whatever your word says for my life, so be it done. According to your word, let it be done unto me. That was her desire in her heart. And it was also Joseph. That would be his desire as God would speak to him and give him direction. He and Mary would follow the Lord's leadership in their life. And that is really the true message of Christmas in the sense that this is what it means to be rich towards God, is to be following in footsteps with the Lord. And he will provide what I need as he gives me direction for my life. Because who could put a price on direction and purpose and meaning in life? For that reason, many people today, even though they may have worldly possessions, they live a very life filled with sorrow and grief because their life is not filled with purpose. It's not filled with direction. That's why Jesus said that he's the light of the world. He gives us a light in a time of darkness. He gives us a strength in time of weakness. And so we read here that God was at work in Mary's life, even in a time of of confusion in a time of darkness in the world, God shows through Mary and he shows to all generations to come that those who live by their faith, God is going to give your life purpose in all generations. And that is what the Lord revealed to Mary, that he had a plan for her life and she was going to give birth to a son and he was going to be a king. He was going to be the savior of all the world. And she was to call his name Jesus, which means he's the one who would save the people from their sin. No greater gift could God give than the gift of his son. And that is the gift that we've received. He's given us his son, Jesus, and we have found favor with God because he's given us the promise of his forgiveness. 
He's given us the promise of his wonderful love. These are things that we haven't earned, but God in his infinite mercy, he has blessed us with his presence in our lives. He's come into the world through Jesus, his son. And in a time of chaos, in a time of confusion, in a world that seems every day it's living in in, in more sorrow and questioning what's going to happen tomorrow. That's the kind of world we live in. And it's, it's really the kind of world we've always looked at. If you go back just 100 years in our own country, our country's went through many wars. It's went through many illnesses. It's went through all types of problems, national disasters. We live in a world that's filled with confusion and darkness For no one truly understands what's going to happen tomorrow except for God. And God is promising us that if we, like Mary, will learn to trust him day by day. Let God take care of what happens tomorrow. Let God, who is the everlasting father, he knows the end from the beginning. Let him handle the future course. He knows what's going to happen. He can see it. I cannot. If I worry about the things of tomorrow then I'll be overtaken by today because today has enough trouble in it. And so I need to learn to live life trusting in God daily. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. God knows what I need today. He knows my daily provisions. And that is what he revealed to Mary. Mary didn't have many material possessions. Her and Joseph, they didn't have a nice, uh, elegant house to talk about. But what they did have is their love for one another and their love and trust in God. And for that reason, they had a home because home is where God lives. And if God lives in your home, in your marriage, in your relationship with your children, then you are truly rich. Because if you don't have God in your life, if you don't have God in your home, in your marriage, in your relationship with those you love, like your children or your parents, then there's a great void. And only God can fill that void. And that's why Jesus came. He came to fill the void in my heart. He came to fill the void in my family to come into my life and to make my marriage, to make my relationship with my children and my parents and all those people that I love. He came into my life to give me a heavenly perspective, to fill my life with peace and joy, goodness. These are the things that God can give. The world cannot. The world can only provide us things that are temporary. God gives things that are eternal. Only God can satisfy the eternal soul. But God made a promise. He made a revelation to Mary that he was going to give a son. He had a plan. He had a purpose. We can't forget that even today, in a world today that has so many issues, the world's always had issues. Every kingdom that has ever stood, every kingdom today on this planet, at some point, has problems, whether it be a pandemic or whether it be war, pestilence. There are problems in our own personal lives, finance, accidents, illness. We all go through struggles in life. And sometimes it seems like there's more struggles this past year than there's been. But even so, we should never lose hope in that God is at work in those lives that trust in him. Mary trusted in God and God, for that reason, she opened a door in her life. When I trust in God, that is, I have faith in him. He has now been given an open door into my life to do great things. That's why God, he he revealed himself to Mary in such a special way, because this young teenage girl and Joseph, her husband to be, they open up their hearts to him and allowed God to fill their life with purpose Think about what God was going to do through Mary. He was going to bring Jesus into the world and no one has made a greater difference in the world than Jesus and yet to come because he promised to her that his kingdom would never come to an end. 
Where is his kingdom today? It's in our hearts. It's in the hearts of those who believe in him, who invite him into their hearts. That's where the kingdom of God is established, where he is Lord. That's why the Bible says that if you and I, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, confess that he is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Salvation begins when I open up my heart by faith and God comes into my life through Jesus. He's given us the spirit of his son. And that is where the kingdom of God is today. It's established in the hearts of those who, like children, receive Jesus by faith. But yet the Bible says that in God's time, there's going to be a great revelation of Jesus as king. The one who came and was born of a virgin, who died on the cross and was raised from the dead, he's going to come to this earth and he's going to establish the kingdom of God visibly. He's going to establish justice and mercy. He's going to give knowledge to all the world of God. The Bible says that the world will seek him and they will come to know God. All people will come to experience the true peace the true joy, the true wonderful happiness of knowing God in a relationship. Jesus is going to bring the kingdom age to the earth. Now you say, well, I find it hard to believe. I find it difficult. It sounds like some kind of storybook. It is a book. It's the word of God. That's what this Bible tells us. This is God's plan through all the ages. Again, I read the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. That is God made a covenant with David and David was a king. The Bible says he had a heart after the heart of God. He loved the Lord. He made mistakes, but he loved the Lord with his whole heart. And the Bible says that God made a covenant with David and God doesn't break his promises. You and I, we fail each other. Sometimes we give promises to one another and we fail. We allow things to happen that changes the course or our opinions and we forget and things lose importance. And and for all kinds of reasons, we break promises. But God, the Bible says that he's the giver of promises and he doesn't break his word. And so God made a promise to David in the Old Testament to a king, a boy who would become king. And he made a promise that there would be one who would be born of his lineage, speaking of Jesus, And he would be the king, he would be the anointed one, the appointed one of God the Father, who would one day carry upon him the burden of the world, the government of the world would be upon his shoulders. And he would establish peace and joy and knowledge of God. He would bring an end to deception and lies. And he would bring mercy to all people and truth to all people. And Jesus will reign as king. And he will be the judge of the earth. The Bible goes on to say in Acts chapter 17, there's so many scriptures I could read to this point, but in Acts chapter 17, the scripture says these words. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. That is the time before Christ Jesus came into the world. But now God commands all people everywhere to repent. God commands all people today, now, to repent. For he has set a day, just as God revealed to Mary in his time, in his day, he revealed that his son Jesus, the son of promise, assigned to all people, that God would be Emmanuel, he would live with us. God in his time revealed to Mary that Jesus would be born of her, though she was a virgin. He would do the impossible. God is still the God of impossibilities. What you and I see as walls, what you and I see as limitations, as impossibilities, God is the God of those limitations, the God of those impossibilities. He brings an end to, to our impossibilities by bringing about possibilities. Where you and I fall short, that's where God begins. And so God says in his day, in that day, he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Who is that man? Jesus. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Let me read that again without interrupting with my own thoughts. 
I took away from that scripture. Listen again what God is saying. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof to this to all men by raising him from the dead. He's speaking of Jesus, that he would come and establish justice in God's time. Now, we live in a day and age today where the gospel, that is, God saves through Jesus, that message is being preached to all the world. But there will come a day when that message has been preached and heard and believed by that one last person. And oftentimes the people, people ask, well, when will the end come? The end will come. Yes, the end of this time in which we live is going to come to an end. This time of men and women, humanity ruling the earth. We've destroyed the earth. We've destroyed one another. There's disease. There's problems in creation. Most of which we've caused. We talk about global warming. We talk about pandemics. We talk about death in all its various forms and all the cruelties we see in the world. Those are all the reasons that Jesus is coming again. He's going to establish God's rule, that which is right, that which is just, that which is merciful. And he's going to bring knowledge of God to all people who will receive him as Lord. And he's going to bring about a time, a kingdom of God visibly on earth. This was the promise that God made to Mary. And it's the same promise that God has for those today who will trust in him with the same believing heart that Joseph and Mary had. God, we open the door to him by faith. And he reveals to us his plan for our lives. Even though in our world and in our lives around us, there will be chaos and disease and troubles. But none of those things should shake us or move us to despair and discouragement. But we should move closer to God in all times so that we would be in other people's life, a stronghold, so that other people might see God's presence in our lives and understand that this world doesn't have the answers. The Republicans and the Democrats, men and women, they don't have the answers. They're trying to come up with a government. They're trying to rule the people with all these different solutions and options. But only Jesus has the true definitive option, and that is God's plan. He will come and he will be judge of the earth. But until that day, Jesus comes into a person's heart and life when they, by faith, open the door of their life and say, Jesus, I want to experience God's kingdom now. I want to walk with you. I want to learn more about you. I want to be a child of God, as the Bible says, but as many as received him, that is Jesus, to them gave he the right to be called the children of God. We receive Jesus into our hearts when we, by faith, like a child, when we say, dear God, I believe your testimony. You sent Jesus, your son, into the world and he died on a cross. He was born by a virgin named Mary and he lived a perfect life. And then in your time, he died on a cross and upon him, the sins of the world, the penalty of my sins was placed on Jesus and he fully died the lot for my sins. He died the death that I deserved. But on the third day, you raised him again and you've raised him again so that he can give life that his kingdom might be in our lives who by faith say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I want to live for you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I know that you're calling me to be the Lord and the friend and the savior of my life. And because you're calling me, I accept your invitation. And now I want to live for you. When you open up your heart by faith and ask God to be the Lord of your life, his kingdom is now in you. Have you experienced that saving grace, God's favor? In 2021, 
it is uncertain what's going to happen even tomorrow. Tomorrow will be January 3rd. I don't have promise of what's going to happen tomorrow in my own personal life. I don't know what could happen. There could be an accident or maybe there's a new job opportunity. We don't know. But I do believe that God has tomorrow in his hands. He's the everlasting God. He's the everlasting God of Paul Adams. Not because I deserve it. I'm the least worthy of any person I've ever met. But by God's grace, I have been saved. I've been set apart for God's use. And I am a testimony of God's goodness to all people. So whoever you might be listening to this message, because you see me and hear me, then know that God's favor is available to you and to all who will reach out by faith and say, Lord, have mercy, forgive me. In 2021, I want to live for you daily. I'll let you take care of tomorrow. Whatever happens tomorrow, I'll trust you with that. But I'm, I want to live in the peace and the joy, and I want to live in your strength today. And so by God's grace, I want to live for you now. And what happens tomorrow or what happens in the future, I'm not going to let that take the joy. I'm not going to let that be so negative. I'm going to turn off the television news. I can't worry about all the politics and all the things that's occurring. I can't change a lot of those things. But what I can do is change with God's help. I can change my personal life. And if I change my personal life, then I'll change the person next to me, maybe someone at home, maybe it's someone, you, a, a spouse or a child or a parent. And then one soul at a time, one heart at a time, I'll make a difference for you. That's how God wants me to live. God made a promise to Mary and Joseph a long time ago, over 2,000 years, that he had a plan in a world filled of confusion, where people had lost hope and direction. The Roman Empire dominated the world, but the Roman Empire would someday come to an end. Just as all kingdoms of this earth, they come and go, but God's kingdom will be established forever. And it begins when it is established in my heart, when Jesus is king of my life. Have you ever received Jesus? I'd like to give you an opportunity before we close that he'd be the Lord of your life in 2021, beginning now. The Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Because tomorrow, we don't have a guarantee of. But God gives you the invitation now. What do you need to do? Well, the Bible tells us first is to acknowledge that you've sinned against God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. We need a savior. We need forgiveness. And so the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is the answer to our problem, our eternal sin problem, and my daily problems. He is the answer to all of my problems, and he is the answer, most of all, to the eternal need I have. God provided me Jesus. He provides you Jesus. He came and he died for my sins, for your sins, and he paid the price on the cross. He substituted himself on the cross, and he died for us. And God, on the third day, he raised Jesus from the dead. He lives. He conquered the grave. He paid the price and he lives today and he promises to all who will reach out to him by faith. He promises to come into our heart and to change us from within so that the kingdom of God will be established in my heart now. That is where the kingdom of God is, where Jesus is Lord. And so I believe in him. I believe and trust in God. I believe his testimony that Jesus came and he died for my sins and he raised him from the dead. And thirdly, first, I acknowledge I've sinned against God. Secondly, I believe that Jesus is the son of God who came and died for my sins and he was raised again. 
And then thirdly, I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. You've been appointed as king. You're coming again. You're going to establish visibly. You're going to establish a tangible kingdom on earth. Today, I want to receive that kingdom into my heart and life. I want you to be the Lord and Savior. I confess today, Jesus, you are Lord. And I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me and give my life purpose so that I might walk with you today. That's a great way to begin 2021. It prepares you to live daily for God. I hope today that there is that peace and joy and hope. Those are the things that God gives. Those are the treasures God gives. And he wants you to have them. Open up your heart today by faith and receive Jesus. I've enjoyed being with you. I hope today that you've listened and I hope today you've done more than listened, but you have received God's promises. I had one man speak to me years ago. He was an older man. He was preaching to us and he was uh, at a conference. And he said, when you have an opportunity to talk to somebody, don't tell them that you're proud of your denomination, whether it be being a Catholic or a Protestant, such as a Methodist or a Baptist, Presbyterian, whatever. He said, people don't need to hear that you're proud of being a member of a denomination, but tell them how proud you are of what Jesus has done. Tell them of your experience of how Jesus came into your heart and life. Tell them about the promises of God and his word, how he promises to forgive, how he loves them. That's what people need to hear. And that's what we should share. I hope I've done that. I hope in this last 30 minutes that we've been together, I've given only what God wanted me to share with you and to tell you he loves you. And he has given you an invitation, an open invitation to every person, whether they be black or white, whether there be a woman or a man, a little boy, a little girl, anyone who can understand and God speaks to their heart. He wants you to open up your life and receive him today. And God will bless you for it. He'll make a difference, a difference you'll never forget. Until next time, I look forward to being with you. May the Lord bless us. Let's pray together. This is not for show, but let's just pray. And uh, I'm going to just ask God to be with you and, and with us into this new year. Lord, thank you for this new year. A new year that, Lord, there will be challenges. There will be hardships. There will be problems. But dear God, we are reminded as the angel spoke to Mary, we're reminded that you have given us promises that this world can never take away nor can any situation in life ever break because God has given us his promises and the Lord will never change. Lord, we thank you today as we go into a new year. Be with us through all the problems, through all the challenges we're facing today. I can't worry about tomorrow, but Lord, I trust in you as my father. Take care of tomorrow. Be with everyone that's listening to this message. I pray right now that your presence would stand by them, that they would understand how much you love them and how much you want to come into their heart. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Lord, thank you for that wonderful Savior. In his name I pray, amen. We'll see you next time.